What's going on everybody? I hope all of you are having a great day so far. Now this is your third stimulus check update. As the distribution of the vaccine finally begins to accelerate under the Biden administration, there is certainly hope on the horizon. But we're far way off from a full recovery. And it is our job, our job, to help millions of Americans, struggling Americans, through the next several months of difficulty and hasten the day when our country can finally return to normal. The American Rescue Plan is designed to do just that. Now everybody, don't forget to stay until the end of the video because I'll be telling you exactly when you should expect to receive the third stimulus check of $1,400 and even possibly $2,000. So be sure to stay until the end of the video, folks. Keep American families and businesses and schools and workers afloat until they can get back on their feet. And there's a broad consensus that our country needs more support to get through this crisis. Mayors and governors from both parties support the plan. The Republican governor of West Virginia told Congress, we need to go big. Economists from across the political spectrum say that our economy needs further support. President Biden has indicated that he is still willing to hear ideas from the other side, but he also points out that his plan enjoys strong public support as is. Now critics say the plan is too big. Well, let me ask them a rhetorical question. What would you have me cut? What would you leave out? Well, one of the main provisions that the Republicans point to is raising the minimum wage. And there are at least two Senate Democrats, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who are against increasing it to $15 an hour. Democrats cannot afford to lose either of their votes on this larger package. Now, tomorrow, both sides will square off over whether raising the wage is even allowed under the special rules that Democrats are using to pass this bill we still have not seen the Senate's own version of the broader legislation. And don't forget to give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be entered into my $1,000 free Amazon gift card giveaway. If we get my channel 75,000 subscribers by the end of the month, I'll be giving away a total of $1,000 in free Amazon gift cards. So yes, folks, just be sure to enter my giveaway by subscribing to my channel and giving this video a like. The chair of the Federal Reserve appointed by President Trump just told us that, quote, the economic recovery remains uneven and far from complete, and the path ahead is highly uncertain. Chairman Powell, hardly a raving liberal, concluded there's a long way to go. And it has broad support in America. Seven in ten Americans approve of the American Rescue Plan. In some polls I've seen, a majority of Republicans approve of this plan, Republican voters, not Republicans here in the Senate. Now it's easy to see why there's such broad support. The COVID pandemic is the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst public, public health crisis our nation has faced in 100 years. But our Republican colleagues say all these groups demanding the $1.9 trillion dollar American Rescue Plan, business leaders, government officials from both parties, economists from across the spectrum, and seven in ten Americans. Republicans say all of them are wrong. According to a report in CNN, Republican leaders are maneuvering to get every single Republican member to oppose the emerging legislation. Every single one. Make no mistake, Republicans oppose the American Rescue Plan to the detriment of the country, and they do so at their own political peril. You noted that the U.S. banking system has been a source of strength during the pandemic. The Fed's monetary policy report released on February 19 reaffirmed this point, by stating that institutions at the core of the financial services system remain resilient. Do you continue to believe that banks are a source of strength, and we elaborate both on what that means for the economy and for banks' abilities to lend, yes, absorb losses potentially too, and provide liquidity in distressed markets. As you know, we spent, uh, and the bank spent 10 years uh, in a strengthening process, higher capital, better risk management, higher liquidity, all of those things. And, uh, and then we received a world historical sized shock in the form of the pandemic. State of California has just passed a massive stimulus bill. California state government passed a bill approving $600 stimulus checks for nearly 5.7 million people on Monday. California checks are part of Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom's $9.6 billion stimulus package, 
that is meant to help his state recover from the economic downturn. He and, he and legislative leaders announced the package late Wednesday. Newsom is expected to sign the bill into law by Tuesday. The $600 checks will be available to Californians who are eligible for the Earned Income Tax Credit. And another $600 stimulus checks will be available to people who earn less than $75,000 a year. And according to ABC News, for millions of Americans, stimulus checks from the federal government have provided a financial lifeline. House lawmakers are set to vote on Friday on Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion relief package, which includes a $1,400 stimulus check. And while many struggling Americans have used their checks to make ends meet, retail sales in January also spiked unexpectedly, after some Americans put their stimulus money toward furniture, appliances, or clothes. Research also shows others have saved the money or used it to pay down debt. Census Bureau data showed households with incomes between $75,000 and $100,000 were more likely to use their first stimulus payments to pay off debt or add it to their savings. Speaker Pelosi said in a statement, We must act swiftly to put an end to this pandemic and to stem the suffering felt by so many millions. Now, the Budget Committee vote was 1916, with Texas Democrat Representative Lloyd Dodgett siding with Republicans in opposition to the bill. Republicans say the cost of the bill is too high and that the economy does not need that much support. And Senator Susan Collins of Maine supports lowering the income cap for those who receive $400 stimulus checks. Susan Collins says, I was the first to raise the issue, but there seemed to be a lot of agreement that those payments need to be more targeted. I would say that it was not clear to me how the administration came up with its $1.9 trillion figure for the package. The bill will be sent to the House Rules Committee before heading to the House floor late in the week. The Rules Committee can make changes to the bill. If the bill passes in the House, it will, be, it will be sent to the Senate, where it could be amended and sent back to the House for another vote. Although that may be difficult under the reconciliation process, the bill was reintroduced. Now, in regards to your SI and SDI payments, Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly, provides monthly payments to adults and children with a disability or blindness, and who have income and resources below specified amounts. SSI payments can also be made to people 65 years of age and older, without disabilities who meet certain financial limits. People who have also worked long enough to may also qualify to receive Social Security Disability or retirement benefits as well, as SSI. You may be able to file online for SI and SSDI, even if you're not sure of your eligibility. With that being said everybody, that is all the news in today's video. Thank you for watching and until next time, have a great day and stay safe.